hello everybody welcome to my channel today i'm going to show you how to make this surprise pop-up card it actually pops like this and the little guy inside it's sitting on a square as you can see but sort of it makes the inside the outside becomes the inside and it stays there to deliver the message i actually made one of these years ago it was obviously as you can tell it was not a Christmas card it was a St Patrick's Day card and those of you who've perhaps stamped for a while can see how old this stuff is but you know what it's not about reinventing the wheel when it comes to stamping it's taking an idea or it's called case case copy and share everything so I'm actually copying and sharing my own card but it's nice to be able to be reminded of things and oh I haven't done one of those in forever so long time ago little old leprechaun thank you very much for reminding me and here we have it with all new stuff out of the current holiday mini catalog same card same concept just different stuff to make it with so without further ado let me show you how we make it it's using a piece of well i'll do it that way so you can see it it's 11 by four and a quarter scored at five and a half and then it has a piece of designer series paper overlaid on it, which is the usual one quarter inch layer smaller. So it's four by five and a quarter. And then what I did was I kept the paper. I put the paper on top of the cardstock and using the largest square. If these are the stylus shapes using the largest, largest square. My kindergarten teacher wouldn't be very proud of me, would she? Using the largest circle. I put it on and I cut through both of them and because I cut both of them at the same time when everything was lined up we know that it's going to match so that can come out when the blue we need to put the polar bear on this is actually not needed for this project but come on you can see there's a lot of something potential I don't know what there will be actually I'm doing now a lot more on my Facebook page my business page it's Facebook slash Alison Stamps. And I tend to post more still photographs that aren't really sort of video worthy, but they're still lovely. Or sometimes I do lives that I don't put on my YouTube channel. So you might want to check that out and I'll see what I can come up with for this little inspiration. So here we have it. So there is everything that we needed. And then I also cut out the smaller size circle. So it layers on. So let me go ahead and get that put into place so it doesn't move about too much anymore. So we're just going to put some adhesive around across the top. And it's sometimes a good idea just to put, if you've got a shape cut out, to put a little bit of extra adhesive around. And being a circle, it's pretty easy to line up. Just have to make sure that... The edges around are even so that whoops but I hadn't actually folded and scored it so that's that part there is an inside piece which is the same size layer as the designer series paper it's four by five and a quarter so let's go ahead and pop that in because it's going to need to be in place before we can put the popping up mechanism in so I'm just going to put that in place now what the piece stands on is a piece and it's two and a half inches wide and it's four inches and it's scored at every inch so it's got you know one inch two inch three inches quite often when we do little boxes like this there's an extra half inch this isn't actually required for this one because it's going to fit into the back of the card and just butt up against it so let me go ahead and show you what I mean. Let me actually go ahead and get my tear and take, which I think this is about the second video where I've forgotten to get all my ingredients gathered. So I'm going to put tear and tape along two lengths of this area in the first inch and then peel the backing paper off and then i'm going to put it into the card 
butt it up against the fold and just press it into place. So it's going to create the box, like I said. Now, when we come to attach the other side, of course, there is this piece of the circle is not there. So you don't want to put adhesive where that could stick because when you come to press your circle into place to mail it, it will hold it down and it won't pop. And that defeats the purpose of the card. So we just need to put adhesive along the edge closest to the seam of the card and up the two outer edges and avoid this area. So let me just quickly find the end of my tear and tape, which seems to have gone AWOL. So we'll put a, a little piece at the edge of here, a piece at the other side, and then just along this piece here. So when you close the card, you can just check as long as you don't have any adhesive showing, then you know it's safe to peel the backing paper off. And when you put it together, it will not stick to anything. So close the card. And now when we open it, it opens the box how we want it to be. And that is what this little circle is going to go onto. Now the other piece is just about three quarters of an inch by two and it's scored at one or you can literally just fold it in half and it needs to have adhesive put on both sides. One to stick it down to the box and one to stick it to the circle. The fold of this needs to go to the inside of the card so the circle can attach to it straight up. So I'm just again going to put some little pieces of tear and tape, strong adhesive. I mean you could probably get away with using your liquid glue. I just think the tear and tape is so strong and lovely. It will do just a great job. It's doing a great job of sticking to my fingers let me tell you. So we're going to put the two pieces on each side. So I'm going to tear off, peel off the backing of one side. And remember we want, like we want the hinge to go towards the inside of the card. So if we close it down, we can just pop that on there. So now when we open it, there's somewhere that the circle can stick to. Actually, mine looks like it's got a little, I don't know if you can see that, there's just an itty bitty little bit of too muchness. So I'm just going to snip it off. I mean, look, it really was just a hair's breadth, but I just like it to look neat and finished. So that's that. Now we can go ahead and attach the circle. So we can peel off the backing of the tear and tape. And if you put your circle into place at the bottom where it fits snugly, when you get up to where the sticky is, it will just fit nicely. So now when we come to open it, it's going to reveal what's inside. Now we just need to do a little bit of stamping. So I'm going to be using the snowflakes, which came out of the forever forest there i'm going the polar bear came from berry cute and the greetings all came from berry cute and there are snowflakes but they're just so little i thought well if i've got a nice blizzard going on in a different stamp set i might as well use it so i'm going to be using the knight of navy ink but it's a little bit dark so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to stamp it off on a scratch of paper And then stamp it into place. So as long as we've got snowflakes every which way that the polar bear can be sitting in, that's a great job. So we don't need that right now. Although, you know what? Let's go ahead and stamp. While we've got the ink pad open, let's go ahead and stamp the greeting. So I'm using the Merry Christmas, which again is out of the Berry Cute stamp set. 
and this piece of cardstock is just five eighths of an inch by three and a half so we're just going to stamp that into the middle of there so it leaves a nice border around and then there's also a bit of knight of navy cardstock which is three quarters of an inch by two and three quarters and i already sheared the edges of that one so now i'm just going to take my snips mm, let's see which way around we'll do it we'll just cut to about a quarter inch you can measure it if you feel you want to but i'm just going to eyeball it from about a quarter inch diagonally across to the other side and then it matches up with the chevrons of the knight of navy so i'm just going to put a little bit of oops adhesive there not too much and stick that onto that so it just has a little bit of color behind it you then will attach the snowflake circle onto the big circle and then using a couple of dimensionals I'm going to pop the greeting on just like that and then the piece de resistance as they say is the polar bear and I'd already stamped him in basic black well actually in the memento black and then I had I don't know if you can see him glistening oh yeah I covered him with wink of Stella but there's not a die or a punch for this guy in the set the punch belongs to this bear so this guy I had to just fussy cut out by hand which is why I had already done it ahead of time so then we're just going to take some dimensionals put a big one on his butt and then some smaller ones around. Oh my gosh, I'm sticking to myself. And then quickly peel off the backing papers. And then we'll pop him into place on the front of the card. And there you have it. There's two the same. They both look lovely and glistening pops up when you open it sometimes the um the bits from the stylish shape leave little hairs so this one has a greeting inside you don't have to put a greeting inside you can just hand write something but there's definitely plenty of space that you can do that and of course because it's the basic white you can see what you've said so there are the two bears there's the original inspiration from uh, the little leprechaun guy this one just needs to fold down a little bit better and that's it. If you like what you've seen, please consider subscribing. Likes and shares really help my algorithm. And of course, I truly appreciate them anyway. And last but not least, thanks so much for watching.